Hey everyone, this video is going to show you how to design the perfect Ring of Fire annular eclipse image using Planet Pro. My name is Mike Shaw and I'm a night photography teacher. If you've never used Planet Pro before, there's a link in the description to a page with a lot of video tutorials. So the first thing I want to do is to click this button right here and set the camera view tool to this tool right here. Right now it's set to the location and you can see the latitude and the longitude and the elevation of our spot near Tucson, Arizona. We want to change, we're going to change that, but first I want to click this view right here and that'll give us to our, our camera view. The next thing to do is to set the date for the date of the eclipse. We're going to do that down here by tapping in this bar right here and choose the date feature and just choose the date of the eclipse, which is October the 14th, like that. Done. All right, now the next thing we want to do is to choose the Eclipse tool. Now these, in the um, Apple phones, there's a, a set of boxes right along the top. You can choose from those, or you can swipe down like so. In an Android system, there would be a, a little grid of four squares in this upper right-hand corner, and you would tap on that, and that would bring you to this, whoops, ephemeris page, like this. We're going to, eclipse the, we're going to choose the Eclipse tool, like this, and that brings up a the tool features in this upper region. Right now it's set to penumbral lunar February the 22nd. We're going to tap on that. Um, and we're going to use a filter of annular solar and we're going to take off lunar. And now we're going to search down for October the 14th. Here it is, October the 14th, 2023. There we go. All right, so we've got the date of the eclipse. We've got the eclipse tool. And the next thing we need to do is to choose our location. Now for this purpose, I'm going to search for uh, Albuquerque, Albuquerque in this uh, search function up here. I'm going to say search and it's going to say it's going to come up with Albuquerque so I'm going to select that yes and now we've centered the map at Albuquerque but the next thing we need to do is to set the camera to Albuquerque using this tool right there so I'm going to tap on the camera pin and here we go so we've set the camera pin to downtown Albuquerque as in this example the date is the October 14th 2023 annular eclipse and with the Eclipse tool, it has all the information we need. When the partial phases begin, when the moon is fully inside the disk of the sun, or second contact at 1034, maximum annularity at 1036, the uh, third contact, or when the moon touches the other side of the sun, bottom, at 1039 a.m., and then when the moon exits the sun completely, or fourth contact at 1209 p.m. Now, for this uh, example, I'm going to plan a sequence, a wide-angle sequence, shot. We're going to design that view. So all we need to remember right now is that the activity really starts at 913 and goes to 1209. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swipe to the right and that's going to bring us to the uh, tool, the, the sequence tool. I'm going to tap on where it says Eclipse Sequence here. And I'm going to make sure it's set to Eclipse Sequence. We could really choose these, either of these other two. But we're going to choose Eclipse Sequence, so that's good. And what I want to do now is I want to set the beginning time, the start time. So I'm going to tap and hold on that. Oops, oops, I set that to, I'm going to actually tap on it and set that to 913, like that, done. And I'm going to tap on the end time and set that to, was it 1209? I can't remember. Let's go back and check. It was 1209. We've set our sequence to, begins at 913 and ends at 1209. And the next thing we want to do is to set the interval between shots. So I'm going to tap right there and I'm going to choose 15 seconds. These are all minutes and hours. So I'm going to enter a value down here at the bottom. I'm going to enter in, uh, I'm going to choose seconds, so seconds, 15, so I'm going to choose 15 seconds. I'd recommend shooting every 15 seconds because that way if a cloud comes along or an airplane comes along or something happens, you have plenty of shots to choose from. Done. And you can see this little uh, gray curved uh, shape on the map. That shows the eclipse sequence. And what I want to do now is rotate the camera around like so. And I want to make sure I can adjust the, this, the, the green fan represents the angle of view of the camera. And what I want to do is to make sure that the, the edges of the, I can adjust each side separately. So now I've got the whole uh, eclipse sequence within my angle of view. Now, this is, this is my favorite part of using Planet. We're going to look and see what the image looks like. I'm going to tap right here in this symbol, like so. I'm going to choose the Viewfinder VR. And if you've never been to the place that you are shooting from, you're going to get a pop-up page which asks you to download the map data, which I, of course, highly recommend. And here, here, here we go. For this particular sequence, you can see that the 
Uh, this is the image, by the way. So this is the image that shows a 24.4 millimeter focal length lens from downtown Albuquerque on October the 14th. You can see the eclipse sequence starting here and going all the way to there. Now we can begin to, that's fine, that's the first go. We can, uh, if we slide up and down on the right hand axis, we can change the vertical angle of the camera like that. And if we slide horizontally on the bottom axis, we can change the horizontal axis of the camera. Now in this case, I wanna make sure I get, in this particular example, the complete sequence in the shot, but I'm not getting very much of the foreground here with this, what, this uh, focal length. So I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna go from a landscape orientation to a portrait orientation like that. And I mean, what I love about this is this actually draws in, we can tap 3D right here to really make it come out. This shows the, the local landscape from downtown Albuquerque. So this is the shot that you would get using a 24 lens, millimeter lens. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch and zoom with both fingers like that. So I'm kinda of move it around. You, know, you can move in, you can zoom. You can zoom in like that, you can zoom out. And I think a shot right about there is pretty good because it has enough foreground that we can find something to place in this region of the image, the beginning sequence and the end of the sequence. And this is telling me that I, this is how the image would appear with a 27.8 millimeter focal length lens. I'm gonna tap on that. I'm gonna choose a 28 millimeter focal length. That's a nice round number. And here you go. So if I now were to change the uh, image, the, the interval between shots to let's say two and a half minutes, I'm gonna say enter a value and I can't really do the math this early in the morning, so I'm gonna say 2.5 minutes, done, done. Then you get a little bit better spacing of the moon and the sun, minute, sun images. So for example, you could really zoom in on this and see how things are looking. That would be with the 1,000 millimeter lens, but that's uh, not really what we're gonna use. So we're gonna go back to, I'm gonna tap on there and go back to 28 millimeters, and there you go. Uh, we're pretty much done, so I'm gonna angle this up. Now the next thing that I wanna, the final thing I wanna say is, when do you actually start shooting? I mean, this we know that the, if we go back to the eclipse, uh, the eclipse tool, we press and hold on the maximum annularity, we can choose to set the time to the current time. So that centers maximum annularity in the field of view. So if we zoom in with say a 500 millimeter lens, you can really see what the ring of fire is gonna look like from this location. And it's important to note that Albuquerque is pretty close to the uh, center line of the eclipse. And be very careful if you're off the uh, center line significantly, this annularity is gonna be off to one side. So it's not gonna be a perfect ring. So you really wanna be as close as you can, oops, to the, um, to the uh, location of maximum annularity. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to a 28 millimeter lens and this is my final point, that if you compose the shot, let's say we have a shot something about like that, and this particular composition has roughly one quarter of the scene is foreground. So when I go to set up my shot in Albuquerque, I'd make sure to set up, this is before I put the solar filter on, I set up the composition so I have roughly a quarter of the scene looking like this. But now the question is, well, where, you know, where do I actually start? Where do I, you know, in what direction do I aim my camera? And this is the key. So you can see here, if I scroll back to, um, this is in the Eclipse tool. Let's go back to the sequence tool so you can really see it. So the sequence begins at 9.13, but I don't really want to start there because I might want to include all the other, you know, uneclipsed suns before that. So what I'm going to do, look at this. I'm going to bring, I don't know if you can see this, but right just there, the sun just enters the frame at 8.40 a.m., which is about a half an hour before the, the partial, uh, the, you know, the, the eclipse begins. So what I would do is I'd go to Albuquerque, I'd set up this composition with a quarter of the foreground being, the, the foreground being a quarter of the scene, and then at 8.40 a.m., I would r swivel or pan the camera so that the sun is positioned exactly here, and it's roughly halfway, these, this, these marks here, are the ha these arrows are uh, the center line of the image, it's just below the center line of the image, and then I just start shooting at every 15 seconds, and I would be able to go back home later and assemble the image into this sequence. Hope that helps, and good luck, and clear skies on Eclipse Day.